So after bombing reactors one and five, what do the eco-terrorists do? They go for the trifecta and take out Mako Reactor 7! Another attack by amateurs who don't care about collateral damage! So we're back here and we're gonna run into a little bit of a problem with the story of this game. As I had mentioned in the previous episode, it kind of grinds a little bit to a halt here. Because in the original game, what essentially happened was... Aerith got kidnapped, the plague collapses, and your characters immediately set upon their journey to go and rescue her, climbing back up to the plate. Unfortunately, that doesn't happen in this game. You have to go and do a couple of mandatory side quests, and then you have the option to do a bunch of more optional ones. Bro! Tifa! Damn, is it good to see you guys again? I told you to stop calling me that. Bro! I'm in serious need of your expertise. Lend me a hand. Fine. What? Truth is, I'm uh, trying to get out of town for uh, reasons. Yeah, reasons. But the thing is... <laughs> I got mugged! She took it! Took it all, man! <sighs> I tried to chase her down, I really did! But she was real fast-like. Man, what am I gonna do? This could be the end for old Johnny boy. I'm begging you, help me out! Come on, bro! What'd she look like? Bro! Uh, hold on. Let me think. I wanna get this right. She was a cutie. Black hair. Pretty sure she was wearing a hat. And, uh, oh yeah! She was wearing these striped stockings, too. Curie? Which way'd she go? Uh, toward the church, I think. And I'm not opposed to the idea of side quests, even side quests that appear in more tense moments of the game, but it does kind of um, screw with the pace of the story, them occurring at this point in the game. Really, I feel like this shouldn't have been in here. You could have had some of the smaller quests, like not necessarily getting Johnny's wallet and all, but the Corneo stuff and all that. Where the hell did she go? But anyway, jeez, Johnny, this character. I don't quite know what to make of the character of Johnny in the original release of the game, because probably due to some translation issues and all that, you're given the impression that Johnny and Cloud had known each other from Nibelheim, that he was one of the kids that lived there. Apparently this isn't really the case. It's a bit of a translation error and some slightly unclear text in the game of dialogue giving you the mistaken impression that he was from Nibelheim. I guess this remake pretty much confirms the fact that he wasn't. He and Cloud do not know each other at all. And they pushed him quite a bit more into this game than he was in the original. In the original he was just in Sector 7 and then he leaves at the beginning uh, between your first and second missions. You see him on the train, and then you run into him at um, in Wall Market. I think it's an optional thing that you talk to him, but he's there. Then you don't see him again, I think, until Costa del Sol, which doesn't appear in this remake. And that's pretty much where he stays. In this remake, they put him everywhere. I mean... He had a lot of interactions with Aerith. He was doing on a side quest involving him now. I mean, it's he's much more prominent, but he's irritating as hell. Oh, it's you, my good Merc. What brilliant timing you have. Oh, hello there. It is a pleasure to meet you both. I'm a journalist for The Daily Buzz. The Daily Buzz? You mean that trash filled with Shinra fluff pieces? Well, yes, that's fair. But we do get a lot of inside information because of our close ties with the company. <laughs> Curious? Here's the scoop. A certain division of Shinra, that shall remain nameless, was planning to seize Corneo's assets. But before they could, the key to his secret vault, within which his misbegotten gains were securely tucked away, was stolen. And my sources tell me that the thief is the Undercity's beloved hero, the Angel of the Slums! The unidentified bandit who's been targeting anyone with ties to Shinra or Corneo. Yes, that Angel of the Slums has struck again! Well, do I have your undivided attention now? 
Kinda, but hurry it up. We don't have time for a three-act play. Then I'll make this quick. So, my good Merc, you do remember where the Angel's hideout is, right? Do you remember the death threat she left there? Oh, that. I decided to seek the silver lining in this case. If the Angel of the Slums deigns to take an interest in a humble reporter, then that itself would be a story. <sighs> what are you asking? If you recover the stolen key, feel free to help yourself to the contents of Corneille's vault. All I want is knowledge, the identity of the Angel. So if you happen to learn anything of value, I'd be tremendously grateful to you if you passed it along. If he hasn't yet figured out who the Angel of the Slums is, he is much dumber than he thinks of himself. What? It wasn't me! You've got the wrong girl! Never committed a crime in my life! You Kyrie? Uh, Kyrie? Who's that? Can't say I know her, but cool name. <laughs> Someone mugged our friend and took every last skill he had. Sound familiar? Oh, that? <laughs> oh, I thought I was in actual trouble. Don't scare me like that. Now I remember you. You're that chick. The one who was spreading lies in Sector 5. Oh yeah, I did do that. <laughs> good times, good times. <gasps> Hold on. I know you, Blondie. You're that merc everyone's talking about. Huh, maybe my luck's not so bad. Shinra's after me. You've got to help me. So from them too, did you? No. Well, yes, sort of. It's complicated. How was I supposed to know they were Shinra? And now those jerks won't leave me alone. Even though all I took was some ugly key. I mean, what's the big deal anyway? Wait a minute. That was you? <sighs> oh, great. So everyone's talking about it? <laughs> Is this the end? Am I a dead woman? Do I have to go in the run? <laughs> Leave Midgar forever and, and never look back? Kyrie, please. Just give us the money you stole from our friend, would you? And the key while you're at it. No way! You're gonna split the second I do! And then who will protect me? I can't handle this on my <sighs> we'll handle Shinra if you give us the key. Deal? It's a deal. Right about now, those Shinra creeps should be hanging out at the Coliseum. They're waiting for a special match to start, starring yours truly. It's the talk of the town. You're joking. Oh, I won't be there. I'm not stupid. It's a miracle you've managed to stay alive this long. I'll take that as a compliment. Now run along and clean up my mess. You'll get your key once I know I'm safe. I had no idea who this character was, and I suspected she was created for the sake of the remake, because she definitely wasn't in the original game. So I looked into it a little bit, and it turns out she was a character from one of the compilation of Final Fantasy VII games that came out in the mid-2000s or so, like the PlayStation 2 era. I'm not sure which game. It was one of the ones that I never played, and there were a number of those games that came out for dead platforms, like mobile phone platforms that don't exist anymore and you can't, you can't play even if you tried or you wanted to. So it seems a little unusual that they take a character from one of those and then stick it back in the remake of the original game. I'd have to say she's a bit of an irritating character, because, well, she comes across as a bit of, like, a stand-in for Yuffie, meaning she's a young girl who is overly animated, <laughs> let's call it that, and she is a thief, definitely somebody you can't trust. Oh, Champ, couldn't have picked a better time. This Kyrie chick totally flaked on her match, which means we're down a fighter, and we can't exactly pit the other guy against himself. What do you say? Mind taking her spot? I'll take it. Sweet! You're a real wall market hero, man. Crowd's gonna go wild when they see you.
The hell you doing here? Where's the girl, Kyrie? That thieving little pipsqueak. Guessing he's the guy she's running from. Kyrie's not coming. He'll have to make do with us. Whatever. I can roll with it. After all, you and me, we got unfinished business. In a shocking turn of events, our next bout is now a grudge match. Which of these two will claim victory in today's Angel Cup? Fighters, begin! I get why this battle arena exists in the game. It's sort of like just a, another way of putting more gameplay into it, some side quests, that kind of stuff, where you can, sort of like the monster arena in Final Fantasy X, and the ability to go back there and take part in it after the bulk of the main story is completed makes perfect sense. But I think it doesn't really fit into the story of the game all that well. Especially when you're running through Walmart at the first time, when you're with Aerith and all that. You're trying to get into Corneo's mansion, and honestly, the process shouldn't really take all that much time. Because, like, how long does it take Corneo to discover Tifa's in his basement and decide he wants to have sex with her? Shouldn't take that long. But Cloud takes part in all of these fights, and then goes and into this nightclub and all these other things. But the, it does seem like it takes too much time, but the battle arena seems like, like you, not only does it take too much time, but Cloud should be trying to maintain some kind of a low profile. And hell, even Aerith gets noticed as somebody who is in the battle arena when she's in Corneo's mansion. So it's like, how the hell do you not know who any of these people are? Everyone was watching. Oh, not only does he retain his crown, but now he can add Beast Whisperer to his list of impressive achievements! Ha! That wasn't too much trouble. Watching you guys fight gave me goosebumps. Hope your next match is even better than the last. So how'd it go? Well enough. If they're smart, they won't send anyone else. Really? Oh, that is so good to hear. Learn your lesson, girl? Totally. From now on, I only steal from the right people. That ain't the lesson. <sighs> Talk about a weight off my shoulders. Oh, I completely lost track of time. I'd better get going. Hold it. Uh, Grandma! Why are you here? You, young lady, are gonna hear about this later. Thank you for keeping her out of trouble. She say Grandma? What? Did I forget to mention it to you? Kyrie is my granddaughter, my flesh and blood. See? We even have the same eyes. Kyrie, the key. You've kept them waiting long enough. Yeah, yeah. What's it for, anyway? Why do you guys want it? And how's that any of your business, young lady? Learn to wipe your own ass before you start rooting around in other people's shit. Ugh, Grandma, cut it out. You're embarrassing me. Me embarrass you, says the girl who steals from anyone. Even a thief needs principles. Not to mention the courage of convictions to follow their conscience. Take it from me, the guardian angel of the slums. Wait a minute. You're the angel? And you three are avalanche. <sighs> There's a fire in you. I can see it flickering in your eyes. That same fire's in me too. The guardian angel of the slums, avalanche. They're just names. We are who we choose to be. But you have to decide who that is and commit. Make the most of your time when you still have it. Right? <laughs> we are who we choose to be. Huh? If we got our hands on Corneo's fortune and gave it away, we could be angels of the slums too. Hmm. I suppose that's one way we can do some good. But that isn't the only way that Avalanche could make a real difference. That's true enough. 
This fight of ours is far from over, though. I hear Corneo's got secret rooms hidden in the sewers. More than even he knows if the rumors are true. That reminds me, someone spotted a tacky-looking door over by the collapsed expressway. If you're curious, there's another door that's got Corneo's emblem and everything on it. Right by the Angel's hideout. I hear Corneo's got secret rooms hidden in the sewers. You know, I didn't realize it until I went to replay the beginning sections of the game. But Curie was actually on the train heading back to Sector 7. She doesn't have any dialogue with the character, with Cloud or anything, but she does sort of say something, like call him rude or something like that. But she's there. And you know what, it's... I kind of probably noticed her before because she's a character with a whole lot more detail in the character model than anybody else in the train. Other than the members of Avalanche, everyone else is a sort of fairly generic character model. Then there's this girl there, so probably should have suspected that she'd make it a reappearance later on in the game, but, you know, I didn't put that together at the time. Or if I did, I forgot. Anyway, we need to head back to Johnny and give him his wallet. We also have the key to open up Corneo's stash in the sewer, but that won't be happening in this episode. In fact, I'm a little unsure on how many of these little side quest things I'm going to include in this series. I'm kind of wanting to just sort of get on with the story and not let this uh, video series get bogged down with a whole bunch of side quests. This whole Guardian Angels of the Slums thing was kind of stupid. I mean, I get that they're going to jam a bunch of side quests in here and some of them are going to have reoccurring story elements, but I mean, if you couldn't tell who the guardian angel was this kind of robin hood-esque character you uh, i felt like they were insulting my intelligence the entire time so okay so this old this old woman looks like a librarian dressed like a bum is the guardian angel of the slums you know steals from the rich gives to the poor or whatever the hell kind of thing the um pickpocket granddaughter thing was a bit of a twist but my wallet! My precious wallet! You really did it, bro! I knew I could count on you! For the last time, don't call me that. Thank you. Now I can get out of town. You're leaving? Hush, Tifa. Don't try to stop me. I'm a wanted man in these parts. If I stayed, I'd be a danger to you, too. Uh, okay? But if you begged me to stay, I could reconsider throwing everything away. Good luck out there, Johnny. Oh, uh, okay. You'll be fine wherever. You're Johnny. Don't forget. Uh, yeah. Hell yeah, I am. I'm your Johnny, Tifa, and nothing's gonna bring <sighs> me down. Bro, Tifa, keep on shining. Johnny out. <sighs> what is this idiot still doing here? I mean, does he not remember the time Cloud tried to kill him? Because he knew too much and he only survived because Tifa convinced Cloud not to do it. That's funny they even have the... He had a distinctive running animation that Dumbass did in the original game. And they have him doing it in this game, too. That's... I think that's a nice little touch there. He was like, you're like, you know what? I'll stay. I'll stay. Like, while he's standing next to a guy who was about to decapitate his ass back when <laughs> the Shinra had first caught up to him. You know, it's hard to tell how much Johnny knows. Either he knew all about Avalanche, or he knew just enough to have been dangerous. I mean, there was something about he was used to get a key card or something to break into the reactor. But, whatever. You want us to go back into the sewers with you? What's down there? Corneo's hidey hole. That's where I'm headed. You're not going to try to screw us over, are you? If that's what you think, walk away. I'll find somebody else to work with. And you'll have to find another way to get topside. <laughs>